Hello, Dr. Herman here, and I've got an update about uh, one of my patients, a female, who suffers from lupus, lupus, excuse me, autoimmune disease. She's suffering a bit less now after uh, following uh, protocols in my, in my lupus recovery program, my very unique lupus recovery program, and we're probably about um, six, seven months into care, and something amazing is happening for her. Her anemia that she could not stabilize for 10 years is now becoming stable. And the blood anemia was not caused by iron deficiency like most physicians think. The, uh, uh, the information that I found on her uh, blood analysis when I first met her way in the beginning of our program was that she actually had excess iron storage. So the hemoglobin levels in her on her blood tests that were low, her anemia was not caused by an iron deficiency. And she was taking iron for 10 years and not getting anywhere. And what I found with her was very interesting, was that she had infection within the red blood cell. My unique system, my unique work can actually find infections and toxins in different tissues. And now I wanna, I wanna share, not only is her anemia becoming more stable, but her, and she'll be able to film a video testimonial as we really move along and, and, and fix many of whatever other symptoms and, and things that she wants to see that are stable before she'll get on camera with me. But also she had alopecia on the back of her head and uh, last, about two months ago, this is May of 2015, the alopecia existed. It was about March that we saw the spot was on the back of her head. And I just saw her this past week in May of 2015 and the alopecia completely is gone. The red palms, the Raynaud's phenomena type of symptom completely gone, the joint pain completely gone. And her energy is way up and she's very happy. She's still taking Plaquenol, she is taking prednisone, but we've been able to in the last two months to reduce the Plaquenol to close to half of its use and she's getting better, which is awesome. In this exam, uh, I found in her red blood cell, a primary degenerative tissue of her body on this exam day was lead, mercury, electromagnetic stresses from TVs and cell phones. Uh, and very interesting with, with this patient's findings is that she recently had a hair analysis done. And I used to profess hair analysis is the number one way to find if there's any heavy metals in the tissues. She had a hair analysis done by another physician. Back, she's in South America. She had done this hair analysis test. And the hair analysis exam came back with zero heavy metals in her tissues, zero. When my testing was done, her red blood cell showed mercury and lead in the red blood cell, but not in her hair analysis. Further down the line in our analysis showed her spleen was sick and the spleen, which helps you filter out the bad cells from the body and put the good cells back into circulation. Her spleen showed cadmium heavy metal. It showed one, two, three, four kinds of mercury compounds in the spleen. So I ask you, if we can find these metals in the tissues, but not find them on hair analysis, if you've already gone to a doctor, if you're dealing with lupus, if you're dealing with any autoimmune disease, if you're dealing with chronic fatigue, if you're dealing with a blood cell disorder, and your doctor is running some pretty good laboratories and not finding what's causing it, we have to step outside the box and find what's causing your condition. And there are some very unique skills that I hold in my clinic and my practice with some very unique tools to help you find what it is in your tissues that's causing you or a loved one, a family member, is causing you to be ill and not be able to reverse the condition with your immune suppressing medications. Further down this list that I found in this patient uh, exam findings is her and there's a very long word, and I'll put this on the screen as I'm speaking here, when I edit my video here, but the reticuloendothelial system. If you look that up online, and you should, so you get to know about your body, the RES, or reticuloendothelial system, is a core part of our body that helps us fight infections, macrophages that actually help to engulf these infections and kill them. And her reticuloendothelial system showed in my exam to have a serious, serious decrease in function caused by electromagnetic field stresses. We provide remedies for these. We can actually remove the electromagnetics from the tissues and help that tissue function the way it's supposed to function. 
but her immune system for all these years has had her reticuloendothelial system, her red blood cells have been invaded by infection and environmental stressors and not allowing them to function the way that they're supposed to. And that's with all autoimmune disease, whether it's lupus or, or, or rheumatoid arthritis or, or multiple sclerosis or psoriasis or any of these conditions, diabetes even, and, and the list goes on, is that there are toxins and infections in the tissues, in the cells, causing these cells to not function appropriately. And we've got to be able to find them. Now, further down her examination on this day, showed that a layer of her meninges, you've heard of meningitis, inflammation of the meninges, this layer of her meninges known as the pia mater, you understand something, and I know some people watching this video have not been to uh, school to learn all about the anatomy, but, uh, and that's okay, uh, but the, the, the nervous system, including your brain and your spinal cord and your brainstem, they are covered by three layers of what's known as the meninges. So think of it like a saran wrap covering to your brain and spinal cord. You've heard of an epidural. Well, the epidural goes above, it's an injection that goes into the spine, but above the outermost layer called the dura. The pia is the innermost layer. We don't have to get more technical than that. Let me just make it simple for you to get. Her pia mater has a very, on this day, May 15th of 2015, a very high level of the bacteria, which is the causative agent connected to Lyme disease. She has a very, very high level, significant level of the Borrelia burgdorferi in her pia mater. She also has residues, side effects from the MMR vaccine, the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine. She also has mycoplasma bacteria in there. She has the Bartonella bacteria in her pia layer of her meninges. And she also has a parasite called Babesia macrati. And that Babesia parasite can get into the red blood cell. They could harm every single tissue in the body. Listen, if you're going through care with a physician and they're the best hospital and the best physician and the best immunologist and the best whatever they are, if they can't find in the laboratories what is causing your symptoms and they can't give you any other protocol besides changing your diet or giving you medications or trying some herbs or trying, uh, you know, just taking the mercury out of your teeth, you are not and this patient, by the way, with the mercury that's in her red blood cell and the mercury that's in the spleen, she has zero cavities, zero mercury fillings in her mouth. Does a parent or a grandparent have it? Could the mercury in these different compounds gotten in to our body from mercury that was in a parent's tooth or a grandparent's tooth? Sure. And it came through the bloodline into her body. Could the mercury compounds in her body could have come from maybe some seafood or canned foods? Sure. Could the mercury come from, and reports say, from vaccines that she's been given? Absolutely. These are three of the very common ways that people can get these mercury infestations into their cells and their tissues, causing disease in the body. So we sent her home with remedies for these findings, and these remedies will help her body evacuate these, these findings from her tissues and help her cells recover. And we've got to keep going on and help her get out of the woods. But right now, it looks like she's responding very well to this. And um, uh, it's, it's quite enjoyable when we can actually see that a hemoglobin level that somebody's been suffering with anemia for 10 years, maybe even longer, but she found out about it 10 years ago and was following it every month with blood tests that we're seeing it stabilize with, with stopping the iron supplementation and the hair growing back and the joint pain gone and the hands, the, the, the redness in the skin is, is gone. She's still on her immune suppressive medications. We will get there when we can get there, but my work, I'm integrating with her medical doctor who is slowly, slowly decreasing uh, her from these immune suppressive medications as we are fixing what's wrong in her system. I'll report more to you. I don't see this patient for another 55 zero days. So thank you for letting me share this information with you and I look forward to sharing the update with you on her next exam. Have a great day, and you can also subscribe to my YouTube page and come over to my Facebook page. I'll put that information on the screen and below on my YouTube page here. And, uh, and share this with one friend, because there are people out there who deserve to know that there are ways to get well.